Welcome back everybody. This is the digital portrait drawing course. We are now in lesson two, which is titled the digital advantage. In this lesson, we will be reviewing some of the files included with the course files and talking about how to use them and also discussing which digital tools we will be using in the class and why they are so advantageous. So let's begin with the primary tool for the course. This is what I'm using, Photoshop CS6 Extended. Now, if you have an earlier version of Photoshop, that should be okay. The concepts that are presented in the class will still be the same, and they will still work. The specific tool settings will not be quite the same, because I am using some of the new tools found in, in Photoshop CS6, primarily some of the tool presets with the erodible tips. Now, if you took my Fundamentals of Digital Drawing course, you know how to set up the Digital Drawing Workspace. If you didn't take that, I highly recommend you going back and taking a look at that. It talks in depth about how to set this up. But if you have it, primarily what we want to have is the layers visible, the tool preset and brush presets also readily available in some way of selecting color. It's also important that once you have the brush selected in the tool presets, options up here to go ahead and load the pencil brushes. That's what's going to give us the 2B pencil and 2H pencil and the 4B and 4H and the 9B. And we will be using those. So it is important that you go ahead and take care of that now before we begin. Next, let's discuss the input device. I am using a pressure sensitive Wacom tablet. I highly recommend that you use at least some form of pressure sensitive tablet and not try to accomplish this course with a mouse. The reason is the pressure sensitivity of a tablet is much better suited for things like the erodible tips that we're going to be using. If, just as a preview here, you can see how there's a tilt function associated with the pencil tip there in the preview window. That's not something you're going to be able to control with a mouse, and that tilt affects the mark that you make with the tip of the pencil. That's a very important characteristic that's only available through the pressure sensitivity of a graphics tablet. I recommend a Wacom tablet simply because they are the largest and most reliable brand that I have known anyway. They do offer some inexpensive versions of it. You can get their bamboo line for about $100 or so. The more higher end professional levels can go up to about the three to $400 range and then the top end products can be up near the thousands. So it's your choice how much you'd like to spend, but I do highly recommend you find at least one of them to use for the, a course that involves drawing digitally. So now let's talk about some of the files that's included with the course files, some of the resources that you have to work with during this class. We will begin with the sketchpaper offwhite.jpg, which is one of the more common ones that you'll be using with almost every single lesson. We'll start with this. This serves as our blank sheet of paper, so to speak. It's really an off-white sheet of canvas. There's a slight grain to it, and there's a slight darkening of the edges just to give it a little more character and appear to be a little less digital and mechanical. It feels more like an actual sheet of paper. So we will be using that routinely throughout the course. So be sure that you find that and, and keep that someplace where it's very handy. And next, let's talk about the reference photos that I've included in the folder called Reference Photos under Course Files. These are photographs of models that serve really well for references for portraits. Now, I chose these because they've got a good mix of head shapes and eye shapes and nose shapes and mouth shapes and and they work really well to help study the angles and the way the faces are constructed and we will be going through and we will be using several of these not all of them in this course I've included more than what we use simply so you can have additional files to study and look at and the more you begin to analyze the way human faces are constructed the better your portrait drawing is going to be the easier that it's going to become for you and the more familiar you you will be with the human face now a note on these these are free files that are downloaded from stockfreeimages.com I contacted them and they 
very generously offer to donate these files for use for free within the course they did ask that I simply provide a link back to their site so that is www.stockfreeimages.com these are free images and they'd like to keep things that way and so their only request is that if you use these you use them strictly within the course context use them for study and course projects just within this class if you want to use them for separate projects you will need to go to their website and download them directly and read the terms of use for the images there so next let's talk about one of the most fun files that is included in the course files for this class and that is the egghead shape.psd what I've done here is used the 3d tools and Photoshop extended to create a 3d basic head shape and if you are using Photoshop extended you can go in and you can open this file and you can rotate and move this head around to all different angles and locations just to get a general basic outline and direction for how to form the head. Now we'll talk about the actual construction of the head in a later lesson, but I thought this would be a good time to introduce this file and show how it works because I think the other lesson will be full of more valuable actual artistic content and less tool focused instruction. So if you're using Photoshop extended you can open this file make sure you have the 3d layer selected which is really the only layer in the file and just using the move tool you select that first icon in the 3d mode and you can rotate and drag and move this thing around now you may be noticing that the neck moves along with this that's true if you don't want the neck to move along with it you'll have to switch to the 3d workspace go in and look for the ellipse one layer which is just the neck layer there and then you can manipulate that independently to move to a more downward direction after you've rotated the head if you wish to do that but since this is simply a reference file to help generate the the basic structure and learning how to form the head shape in a very rough in general sense you shouldn't really have to do it this is just a visualization aid is really all this is so I know what you're probably thinking well it'd be nice if I had the 3d version of Photoshop if I had that extended version to handle the 3d capabilities but I don't so I guess this is pointless right not necessarily what I've done also is include a head angle reference ping file PNG file which you can open in any version of Photoshop and I've gone through and repositioned this head in a technical array of different angles and directions again simply to be quickly and easily used for your reference so how would you use something like this let's open up our sketch paper again here's our head angle reference and let's pick say a three-quarter view looking to the right so the thing to do there is use one of these lasso tools select just that hit copy so that's control C or edit copy go over to a sketch white paper and then edit paste or control V and we've got our head shape in there. Hit Control T for transform, hold down the shift and the alt key and scale it up to however size you need that to be and you've got the basic shape of the head that you can then use for sketching over the top so it so it maintains the fullness and the sense and the proportions that we're going to be aiming for in this portrait class. Well, folks, that brings Lesson 2 to a close. That's the content I have for the Digital Advantage portion of this class. Be sure to grab the Lesson 3. Be sure to grab the next lesson, Lesson 3, on Drawing from a Reference. We'll show you some of the tricks and shortcuts that Photoshop offers so that we can use some of those reference photos and some of the tools to generate a digital portrait quickly and effectively.